Dom Pedro II, nicknamed the Magnanimous, was the second and last ruler of the Empire of Brazil, reigning for over 58 years. Born in Rio de Janeiro, he was the seventh child of Emperor Dom Pedro I of Brazil and Empress Dona Maria Leopoldina and thus a member of the Brazilian branch of the House of Braganza. His father's abrupt abdication and departure to Europe in 1831 left a five-year-old Pedro II as emperor and led to a grim and lonely childhood and adolescence. Obliged to spend his time studying in preparation for rule, he knew only brief moments of happiness and encountered few friends of his age. His experiences with court intrigues and political disputes during this period greatly affected his later character. Pedro II grew into a man with a strong sense of duty and devotion toward his country and his people. On the other hand, he was increasingly resentful of his role as monarch. Inheriting an empire on the verge of disintegration, Pedro II turned Portuguese-speaking Brazil into an emerging power in the international arena. The nation grew to be distinguished from its Hispanic neighbors on account of its political stability, zealously guarded freedom of speech, respect for civil rights, vibrant economic growth and especially for its form of government, a functional, representative parliamentary monarchy. Brazil was also victorious in three international conflicts under his rule, as well as prevailing in several other international disputes and domestic tensions. Pedro II steadfastly pushed through the abolition of slavery despite opposition from powerful political and economic interests. A savant in his own right, the emperor established a reputation as a vigorous sponsor of learning, culture and the sciences. He won the respect and admiration of scholars such as Charles Darwin, Victor Hugo and Friedrich Nietzsche, and was a friend to Richard Wagner, Louis Pasteur and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, among others. Although there was no desire for a change in the form of government among most Brazilians, the emperor was overthrown in a sudden coup d'état that had almost no support outside a clique of military leaders who desired a form of republic, headed by a dictator. Pedro II had become weary of emperorship and despaired over the monarchy's future prospects, despite its overwhelming popular support. He allowed no prevention of his ouster and did not support any attempt to restore the monarchy. He spent the last two years of his life in exile in Europe, living there alone on very little money. The reign of Pedro II thus came to an unusual end. He was overthrown while highly regarded by the people and at the pinnacle of his popularity, and some of his accomplishments were soon brought to naught as Brazil slipped into a long period of weak governments, dictatorships, and constitutional and economic crises. The men who had exiled him soon began to see in him a model for the Brazilian Republic. A few decades after his death, his reputation was restored and his remains were returned to Brazil with celebrations nationwide. Historians have regarded the emperor in an extremely positive light and several have ranked him as the greatest Brazilian. Early Life Birth Pedro was born at 2.30 on 2 December 1825 in the Palace of São Cristóvão, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Named after Street, Peter of Alcantara. His name in full was Pedro de Alcantara João Carlos Leopoldo Salvador Bibiano Francisco Xavier de Paula Leocadio Miguel Gabriel Rafael Gonzaga, through his father, Emperor Dom Pedro I. He was a member of the Brazilian branch of the House of Braganza and was referred to using the honorific Dom from birth. He was the grandson of Portuguese King Dom João VI and nephew of Dom Miguel I. His mother was the Archduchess Maria Leopoldina of Austria, daughter of Franz II, the last Holy Roman Emperor. Through his mother, Pedro was a nephew of Napoleon Bonaparte and first cousin of Emperors Napoleon II of France. Franz Joseph I of Austria-Hungary and Don Maximiliano I of Mexico, the only legitimate male child of Pedro I to survive infancy. He was officially recognized as heir apparent to the Brazilian throne with the title Prince Imperial on 6 August 1826. 
Empress Maria Leopoldina died on of December 1826, a few days after a stillbirth, when Pedro was a year old. Two and a half years later, his father married Amelia of Luxembourg. Prince Pedro developed an affectionate relationship with her, whom he came to regard as his mother. Pedro I's desire to restore his daughter Maria II to her Portuguese throne, which had been usurped by his brother Miguel I, as well as his declining political position at home led to his abrupt abdication on 7 April 1831. He and Amelia immediately departed for Europe, leaving behind the Prince Imperial, who became Emperor Dom Pedro II. Early coronation upon leaving the country, Emperor Pedro I selected three people to take charge of his son and remaining daughters. The first was José Bonifacio de Andrada, his friend and an influential leader during Brazilian independence, who was named Guardian. The second was Mariana de Verna, who had held the post of Aya since the birth of Pedro II. As a child, the then Prince Imperial called her Dardama, as he could not pronounce the word Dharma correctly. He regarded her as his surrogate mother, and would continue to call her by her nickname well into adulthood out of affection. The third person was Rafael, an Afro-Brazilian veteran of the Cisplatan War. He was an employee in the Palace of São Cristóvão, whom Pedro I deeply trusted and asked to look after his son, a charge that he carried out for the rest of his life. Bonifacio was dismissed from his position in December 1833 and replaced by another guardian. Pedro II spent his days studying, with only two hours set aside for amusements. Intelligent, he was able to acquire knowledge with great ease. However, the hours of study were strenuous and the preparation for his role as monarch was demanding. He had few friends of his age and limited contact with his sisters. All that coupled with the sudden loss of his parents gave Pedro II an unhappy and lonely upbringing. The environment in which he was raised turned him into a shy and needy person who saw books as a refuge and retreat from the real world. The possibility of lowering the young emperor's age of majority, instead of waiting until he turned 18, had been floated since 1835. His elevation to the throne had led to a troublesome period of endless crises. The regency created to rule on his behalf was plagued from the start by disputes between political factions and rebellions across the nation. Those politicians who had risen to power during the 1830s had by now also become familiar with the pitfalls of rule. According to historian Roderick J. Barman, by 1840, they had lost all faith in their ability to rule the country on their own. They accepted Pedro II as an authority figure whose presence was indispensable for the country's survival when asked by politicians if he would like to assume full powers. Pedro II shyly accepted. On the following day, 23 July 1840, the General Assembly formally declared the 14-year-old Pedro II of age. He was later acclaimed, crowned and consecrated on 18 July 1841. Consolidation. Imperial authority established removal of the factious regency brought stability to the government. Pedro II was seen nationwide as a legitimate source of authority, whose position placed him above partisanship and petty disputes. He was, however, still no more than a boy, and a shy, insecure and immature one. His nature resulted from his broken childhood, when he experienced abandonment, intrigue and betrayal. Behind the scenes, a group of high-ranking palace servants and notable politicians led by Aureliano Coutinho became known as the Courtier of Faction, as they established influence over the young emperor. Some were very close to him, such as Mariana de Verna and steward Paolo Barbosa da Silva. Pedro II was deftly used by the courtiers against their actual or suspected foes. The Brazilian government secured the hand of Princess Teresa Cristina of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. 
She and Pedro II were married by proxy in Naples on 30 May 1843. Upon seeing her in person, the emperor was noticeably disappointed. Teresa Cristina was short, a bit overweight and though not ugly, neither was she pretty. He did little to hide his disillusionment. One observer stated that he turned his back to Teresa Cristina, another depicted him as being so shocked that he needed to sit and it is possible that both occurred. That evening, Pedro II wept and complained to Mariana de Verna, they have deceived me. Dardama, it took several hours to convince him that duty demanded that he proceed. The nuptial mass, with the ratification of the vows previously taken by proxy and the conferral of the nuptial blessing, occurred on the following day, the 4th of September. In late 1845 and early 1846 the emperor made a tour of Brazil's southern provinces, traveling through São Paulo, Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul. He was buoyed by the warm and enthusiastic responses he received. By then Pedro II had matured physically and mentally. He grew into a man who, at 1.90 meters tall with blue eyes and blonde hair, was seen as handsome. With growth, his weaknesses faded and his strengths of character came to the fore. He became self-assured and learned to be not only impartial and diligent, but also courteous, patient and personable. Barman said that he kept his emotions under iron discipline. He was never rude and never lost his temper. He was exceptionally discreet in words and cautious in action. Most importantly, this period saw the end of the courtier faction. Pedro II began to fully exercise authority and successfully engineered the end of the courtiers' influence by removing them from his inner circle, while avoiding any public disruption. Abolition of slave trade and war Pedro II was faced by three crises between 1848 and 1852. The first test came in confronting the trade in illegally imported slaves. This had been banned in 1826 as a part of a treaty with Great Britain. Trafficking continued unabated, however, and the British government's passage of the Aberdeen Act of 1845 authorized British warships to board Brazilian shipping and seize any found involved in the slave trade. While Brazil grappled with this problem, the Prayer Era revolt erupted on 6 November 1848. This was a conflict between local political factions within Pernambuco province. It was suppressed by March 1849. With this new tool, Brazil moved to eliminate importation of slaves. By 1852 this first crisis was over, and Britain accepted that the trade had been suppressed. The third crisis entailed a conflict with the Argentine Confederation regarding ascendancy over territories adjacent to the Rio de la Plata and free navigation of that waterway. Since the 1830s, Argentine dictator Juan Manuel de Rosas had supported rebellions within Uruguay and Brazil. It was only in 1850 that Brazil was able to address the threat posed by Rosas. An alliance was forged between Brazil, Uruguay and disaffected Argentines, leading to the Platon War and the subsequent overthrow of the Argentine ruler in February 1852. Barman said that a considerable portion of the credit must be assigned to the emperor, whose cool head, tenacity of purpose, and sense of what was feasible proved indispensable. The empire's successful navigation of these crises considerably enhanced the nation's stability and prestige, and Brazil emerged as a hemispheric power. Internationally, Europeans began to regard the country as embodying familiar liberal ideals, such as freedom of the press and constitutional respect for civil liberties. Its representative parliamentary monarchy also stood in stark contrast to the mix of dictatorships and instability endemic in the other nations of South America during this period.